Christy, this is Frank. Some of our friends are going to a movie. Do you want to come too? I wish I could, but I'm doing homework. I have to dream up a project about the Victorian times. Oh, I remember that. I had to do the same thing last year. My class even visited a Victorian home. It was cool. If you need any help, let me know. Thanks, but I don't even know where to start, and I'm way too tired to think. Well, good luck. Bye. Bye. Christy, done with your homework already? Not even close. Hi, Frank. Hi, Trudy. I need help. Well, you came to the right place. This is the Wrights Home, a Victorian home built in Evansville in 1871. We'll show you around. Wow, this is awesome. Who lives here? Nobody now. It's a museum, but it used to be the home of the Wrights family. That sounds familiar. Does it have anything to do with Wrights High School? It sure does. Wright's High School and Wright's Memorial Catholic High School are both named for the people who lived here. I think my class is coming here on a field trip tomorrow. Then here's your chance to get a sneak peek. After we take a look around, you'll be ready for the real tour. Hey, you just gave me a great idea for my homework. I can create an I Spy game and we can play it on our field trip. Good idea. Then you'll need to take some good notes. Ta -da! Ta -da! Wow, how'd you guys do that? Easy. Remember, this is a dream. I'm Johnny, and this is Joey. Hi, so what can you guys tell me about the Wrights family? The Wrights family did a lot to help Evansville grow and develop. John Augustus Wright and his wife Gertrude built the home six years after the Civil War ended. It's over 130 years old. That's really old, but it's not falling apart. Thanks to a group called the Wrights Home Preservation Society. Preservation? What's that? Historic preservation means saving or taking care of old houses and buildings. The Wrights Home is an historic landmark. That means it's worth preserving, so future generations can enjoy it and learn from it. I can see why. It's really unusual. Look at the roof and those windows. That's a mansard roof, and those are dormer windows. You'll learn more about them when you take the tour. See what looks like stones on the corners? They're called coins. All of these special features are typical of a French Second Empire home, a style that was popular in the late 1800s. They'll be the first things to look for on my I Spy list. I'll add mansard roof, dormer windows, and coins. You'll see all sorts of unusual houses in this neighborhood. A walk down Southeast First Street in Evansville is like stepping back in time. Some of the cities Wealthiest families built fancy homes here during the 19th and early 20th century. That's called the Victorian era, from the years 1837 to 1901 when Queen Victoria ruled England. We're learning about that in school. Let's go inside and we'll learn a lot more about life back then. There they go again. We'll catch up with them later. As you can see, the Wrights Home has been restored, so it looks the way it did in the 1890s. I can already tell it's a lot different than my house. Look at the designs on the front porch. You'll find colorful tiles called mosaics inside the house too. I'll add colorful tiles or mosaics on my list of things to look for. How about these front doors? I spy. How many sets of front doors? Good question. This is so awesome. The people who lived here must have been very rich. John Augustus Wrights grew up in a wealthy family in Prussia the northern part of what became Germany. When he was 21, he came to the United States and eventually got involved in the lumber industry. He started his own sawmill in Evansville and it produced more hardwood lumber than any other mill in the country. That's how he earned his nickname, the Lumber Baron. He helped Evansville in other ways too, like starting a railroad, and a bank, and city council, and in the state legislature. Mr. Wrights believed in helping others, especially the needy. He donated lots of money to charities, churches, and schools. 
What about his family? John and his wife, Gertrude, had ten children, seven girls and three boys. When they built this house, two daughters were already married and living in their own homes, but the rest of the children moved in with them. Edward, their youngest child, was eight, and Francis Joseph, their oldest, was 30 when they moved here in 1871. After their parents died, five of the grown-up children continued to live here. Let's take a look around. This must be the living room. That's right. Back then it was called the drawing room. It was used mainly for special occasions, like funerals and parties. I can almost picture it. I hope I'm not seeing ghosts. It's only a dream, right? No one's ever seen ghosts in this house. It's just your imagination. It's fun to imagine what life was like back then. The chairs without arms must have been for the women so they could sit comfortably in their long dresses and full skirts. In every room, you want to look down at the floors and up at the ceiling. They're all different. This ceiling looks almost like a carpet. Good eye. It's hand painted to look just like the rug that once lay on the floor. And look at the fancy mantle. You'll see lots of fireplaces and mantles throughout the house. I wonder how many will count. You'll also see lots of pictures of family members, like this one of Louisa, the Wrights' youngest daughter. I spy how many pictures of the Wrights family? I also spy Joey and Johnny again. Look at these mirrors on both sides of the room. They're huge. And they make the room look even larger. I spy mirrors inside mirrors. Come on guys, we're going to the parlor where the Wright sisters used to entertain friends. Okay, we'll be around. I spy another piano. around the piano was a popular thing to do during the Victorian era. I guess there are no CDs or video games back then. I wonder what else they did for fun. I know the Wrights girls did needlework like this. You can see more needlework in other parts of the house. But first, let's go next door to the study. This room looks more comfortable, not so fancy. The chair is a Victorian version of our modern day recliners. Only you have to stand up to push it back. The mosaic table is probably from a trip to Spain. Francis Joseph and his four unmarried sisters like to travel, and they brought back souvenirs from their trips. The man is just your imagination at work again, but you can add Victorian recliner and souvenirs from their travels to your I Spy list. Let's check out the dining room, where we'll see more signs that a rich family lived here. This is the formal dining room with its French chandelier, fancy furniture, and pineapple wallpaper. Pineapple? Why pineapple? It's a symbol of hospitality or welcome, and another good thing to add to your I Spy game. Oh look, another dining room. This is the breakfast room, where they ate their everyday meals. Hey, where's the kitchen? It's just across this hall. In Victorian times, wealthy families had servants who made the meals. So this is where you two have been? Hungry or something? Yes, but we need a good cook. Now that's more like it. But this is nothing like our kitchens. True, but the Wrights family had some modern conveniences. Over there is the ice box. It kept food cold before people had refrigerators. When the cook put a sign in the window, the ice man knew to add more ice. He delivered it through an outside door right into the ice box. Adding ice box and cook sign to my I spy list. What's that weird looking thing? Oh, this is cool. It's an enunciator or call box. Someone in another room could call a servant by pressing a button. It would send a signal to this box, set off a bell, and show the location of the person calling. Then a servant would go see what was needed. Wow, I wish we lived here. Imagine servants cooking, cleaning, and waiting on you. Isn't that what moms are for? What's out here? This is the servant's hallway and stairs. 
The servants lived up these stairs on the third floor. What's on the second floor? That's where you'll find the family's bedrooms. You can count those, too. Come on up, guys. We found a bathroom. This was one of the first homes in Evansville with a bathroom in the house. Besides the regular bathtub, there's also a foot tub. A tub just for feet? Wonder why. Victorians thought taking a full bath every day was bad for their health. On the days they didn't take a bath, they still washed their feet. Baths bad for you? Maybe I should try that excuse on my mom. Whose bedroom is this? It's the brother's bedroom, Francis Joseph. Like some of his sisters, he never married. Each of the sisters had a bedroom, too. There's one for Christina, or Tina, as she was called, Wilhelmina, who went by the nickname Minnie, Josephine, better known as Josie, and Matilda. Everyone called her Tilly. I see one of the buttons used to call a servant. And the rooms have their own fireplaces, or mantles. Remember, look up at the painted ceilings in each room, too. I also spy really cool looking lights. The chandeliers could operate on either gas or electricity. They're called gasoliers electroliers. On this floor, you'll also find the sewing room, where a seamstress made clothes for the family. And don't forget, there's a basement in the right home, too. That's right. This is where the servants did their laundry. It's about time you did some work around here. Thanks for showing me around. You've helped me a lot. Now I have a great I Spy game to turn in for my project. It's been fun. Tell Johnny and Joey I said thanks. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Come back again and we'll show you some more. Oh, I will. Hey, weren't you guys going to see a movie? Christy, wake up. You've got to finish your homework. Okay, Mom. I think I know what I'm doing now. It's a little something I dreamed up. Or was it a dream?